Wondering if you should start a team or stay as a single agent? Well, I've got somebody today, Kyle Oberlin, who's going to share with you exactly what he did, and he did it the right way, and I know it's going to inspire you to, if you're going to go that direction, you're going to do it the right way as well. All right, Kyle, this is a discussion that I think is going to inspire a lot of people because we're going to talk about, should they start a team? And what were some of the decisions and maybe some of the mistakes you made along the way that uh, maybe they can hear your what you focused on, what you did well, what you missed maybe a little bit, and they can help grow their team. So if you don't mind, introduce yourself, tell them where you're from and kind of what the progression has been for you. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for having me, Jimmy. So my name is Kyle Oberlin. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Professional Realty. I'm in Northeast Ohio, uh, particularly the Akron and Canton markets. Uh, it's the fifth and eighth, big, fifth and eighth biggest city uh, in Ohio. Um, and yeah, you know, so last year, solo agent, um, got licensed in 2016. I was a solo agent all the way through uh, the beginning of last year, um, started scaling out of necessity uh, in 2021. I uh, closed uh, right around 80 units. Um, and uh, last year was on a pace to exceed that. And so, uh, you know, it, it was one of those things that was a necessary evil for my business. Um, I was always anti-team, but, you know, it just made more and more sense. Um, last year, uh, again, like ha about half the year is by myself, uh, and about the other half, I was kind of small team slash going into a medium team. Uh, so now we have uh, myself and eight agents uh, plus an admin, and uh, we're trending towards uh, a little over 200 deals this year. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of good growth uh, year over year from 2021 to 2022, we had 96% growth. And uh, hoping to, you know, maybe do another 25 to 30 percent this year. Yeah, it's so exciting to see that growth. And um, and listen, as we get into this, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those things that um, that you did throughout this year, because that's that's a that's a tremendous amount of growth in a very short period of time. And I, I know this is going to be encouraging to a lot of people. Um, what was it that really made you decide to start scaling the team? Was it just because you got overwhelmed with the amount of leads you had? What was it that really began your process of thinking, I want to scale this thing? Yeah, so it was something that I've thought about for a long time. Um, it, it's funny, though, because I for the majority of my career, I've been anti-team. Um, all of my talking points and listing presentations and everything were, you know, what I do different compared to some of the big teams in my market, because my market's a rough market for teams. I mean, I have the, the largest rematch team in the state of Ohio in my immediate market. I have uh, um, uh, the largest Keller Williams team in the state of Ohio in my market. Um, and so, you know, there's some beaters. And so that was kind of my differentiator was, hey, I'm a solo agent. Uh, but like being kind of a student of this and just having a like a, a genuine curiosity on the business side, um, I was always picking the brains of these people, you know, and just kind of seeing what I felt like they did well, what they didn't do well. Um, and so I did have the benefit of learning for many years with these big teams. And then we have a, like a top 25 um, large Berkshire team in Ohio within my company, uh, the Michael Kane team. And so uh, Michael's a friend of mine, you know, I talked to him and his sister about this stuff all the time too. And so, you know, when I was kind of ready to make that jump, it luckily was at least the knowledge was already there. Um, it was just putting the work in to get the systems in place and, and be able to scale. Uh, but I probably waited a little bit too long um, because I started last year, I think after Q1 of last year, I got an email from uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services that said I was like the top 10 in the country as solo agent. Um, and that was kind of like my wake up call because I was also a local board, uh, president elect and on the rethink council and the state YPN chair. I was just wearing so many hats that I was just being pulled in a thousand directions and I needed to have some sort of team in place to, to help basically when I was out of town or doing other obligations. And so, um, that luckily was pretty easy because I did have two kind of pretty close friends that were already in the industry that I kind of helped like push them into the industry and, you know, help them scale. And so um, those two pretty much joined right away and they already had at least a little bit of experience doing that. Um, and then come April, that's when I was like, okay, I really need an admin. Um, there's way too much slipping through the cracks in terms of updating and doing some of this processing stuff that I just don't have the time for. And so um, that led to me hiring an in, uh, in admin in April. Uh, and then at that point, it was like, I... I guess the macro on looking at this from the macro is me just kind of plugging holes as they came. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, then I found myself driving to the city every single morning, uh, looking at investment properties and that took up a huge amount of my time too. And so 
Then I brought on a gentleman who, again, was already licensed, uh, already working for us. Um, he kind of dabbled in like home flipping. So he kind of knew the game a little bit, but uh, I knew that he would obviously everybody wants to make more money. So I went to this guy, Matt, um, and I was like, hey, Matt, I could probably guarantee you 20 deals a year if you just spend every morning going to all these $60,000 colonials around Akron that hit the market that you could, you know, rent for 1100 bucks a month. And he goes, yeah, I'd love to do it. So then he came on board and started working with my investors. And so that freed up some time as well. And then, uh, you know, as the year went on, like word kind of started spreading almost about, hey, Kyle has a team now. You know, I have a good working relationship with him. He's, you know, been involved in mentoring me in some capacity because I do some mentoring within the brokerage itself. Uh, so, you know, then I started weirdly having people reach out to me wanting to come on board. Um, and so uh, that's how I kind of ballooned at the end of last year was, um, just people reaching out to me and wanting to kind of come on board and join what we had going. So that was kind of almost natural. I mean, you were already doing a lot of the mentoring. You were already generating the leads. You were already kind of find, finding those things. As you said, plugging the holes. Was that admin in April, the first hire, as far as an employee that you had, or did you have someone in place before then? Um, before there, I had like an informal admin, um, Jackson, who's on my team, uh, one of my best friends, but he, uh, he was like one of the first agents that came on board with me, but he was, I was paying him like very part-time to just do like minor transaction processing um, because he was actually uh, working a government job that uh, was like, he was stuck working in like this part of Ohio that really has nothing going on, especially during a lockdown. Um, it's where Joe Burrow's from uh, Athens, Ohio. And so he was back up here because everyone he knew was up here and he could work from home. So uh, you know, he was just like kind of dabbling in real estate, doing part-time admin work for me, but wasn't like a formal employee by any means. So to, to just speak to this, if you don't mind about the, where you're generating these leads again, if you don't, it just kind of share a little bit on kind of, as you've added people, you had to add some layers in for some of these type of lead, uh, lead production and lead generation. What, what do those look like for you? Yeah. So my bread and butter sphere, um, and my sphere has gotten to the point where I, could you know justify having a team just based off my sphere? Um, I was a high school track coach for ten years, um, so you know not to sound old, but a lot of those those kids that I was coaching are now in their mid to late twenties. Uh, so you know that those are home buyers. Um, their parents are are home buyers and sellers. Um, so that that was a good thrusting point for me, um, and I just know a ton of people too. I worked in a restaurant for almost ten years, and you know how much turnover is in a restaurant. I mean, I probably worked with a thousand people <laughs> over ten years. <laughs> And so um, that that certainly helped. And so uh, but other than that, like more towards the lead gen side of it, uh, you know, Zillow is uh, we are big spenders on Zillow. But luckily, you know, as your team scales and as you become a top producer, you're you know, you have lenders and, and whatnot that you can partner with that are willing to because they know that you're you have a proven track record of success and you'll push a good amount of business their way. Um, title companies, too, you know, title companies want to partner with you a lot. So that's helped with my Zillow spend. So, you know, Zillow probably wouldn't be profitable for me if it wasn't for those vendors helping out um, because I don't claim any of those leads. I strictly still work in my sphere. Um, every amount of business that comes from Zillow goes to the team. Um, and generally pretty much every lead goes to the team. Um, but uh, so that's a big one. Uh, Veterans United, you know, those referrals, yeah. um, the brokerage kind of took those on. Um, I do have a, a brokerage as a really aggressive kind of referral slash relocation department. Um, so that's really helped me grow my businesses. Uh, my broker, Dave Masari, um, really has kind of like a business partner relationship with me. Um, so I'm kind of like the go-to in my market um, when it comes to a lot of the kind of business. Um, but other than that, like bigger podcasts I pay for, for, for Matt, my investor, um, buyer's agent. And, yeah. um, you know, really any, any referral fee-based lead source I can find and get my hands on. Um, I know I watched your video of the, you know, the 20 of them or whatever. Uh, you know, that that's what I'm going to always lean towards, because even though you're keeping a lower amount of the commission, it's to me, I treat it as just seeds to the garden. You know, mm -hmm. you take the, the you take the hit up front on that first transaction. Um, then you get referrals from them. You get past clients, you get all kinds of business. And so you, you take the hit at first and it leads to, you know, a lot bigger garden down the road. That's really good. Hey, Kyle, let's talk a little bit about because obviously now we, you've gone this last year, literally into 175 transactions from really starting the team, so to speak, I guess. Um, let's talk about what you wish you would have known this time last year. In other words, as right before you began to scale, what did you learn that you wish you would have known? I learned that you should absolutely have your systems and tools in place prior to scaling. Um, that was the biggest one for me. 
Um, getting process lists in place, you know, luckily I had Jackson that when he was kind of doing that dabbling in, in admin work, he, he was very process oriented. So he did do a good job at kind of like typing out what he needed to do in certain situations. And so, um, but taking that and expanding it drastically because, you know, my admin now does a, a lot bigger scope of, of what, you know, it needs done in every transaction versus what Jackson was doing. Um, but systems and tools, especially getting a CRM that's scalable with you. Um, when I started this team, I did not have a good CRM solution. And so like, you know, you, you'll think I'm crazy, but like I was doing 75 to 85 deals as a solo agent with an Excel spreadsheet. And so, you know, just needing to right. be able to have a, right. a method to disseminate leads to the team, uh, track, um, analytics is huge when you're a team leader. Um, and without tools and systems in place, you have no analytics to, to see how your team's doing, to tra track your ROI well. Um, so it was a big adjustment for me, just getting processes in place and typed out um, so, you know, your admin can can follow them and know what to do. Uh, because, you know, having an admin is great, but while you're training, you know, say you're spending 20, 30 hours a week training, that's time on top of your schedule. That's not time away from your schedule. Right. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, this is what I love about you, too, is a lot of people will be doing 75, 80 deals on their own. That's a very profitable way, but it's a very it's a very difficult way because you're always working um, and there's no relief if you're doing that on your own. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate um, last time we met, you were talked about it was, you know, the, the building the team was not just about money and deals. It was about lifestyle. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about kind of what you're looking at? Because some people, what they'll do is, is they get to 70 deals and they say, oh, well, the next thing I got to do is I got to build a team. And they build it for all the wrong reasons. And it's less profitable and it's more headaches and more people. Um, can you speak to that a little bit about kind of really what your focus was in doing that as far as not just the money, but the lifestyle uh, that it was going to lead to? Yeah. Yeah. And and that was a big part of, of starting a team. You know, I, I I didn't start a team to make a ton of a ton of additional money. You know, I I, I don't make that much more having a team than I did before. Um, to me, it was really a stopping business from slipping through the cracks um, and B, I really enjoy, you know, traveling and, and these masterminds and, you know, being involved at the association, you know, a bunch of stuff that is technically not income generating, but you know, will help you grow your business and, you know, help you make connections and network. And so, uh, you know, without a team in place, that's tough. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've paid, you know, for showings while I was out of town and this and that. And it's kind of nice knowing now that I do have people in place that is kind of a go-to that's like, you know what, I just don't have time to work with this client. And there's no fault in admitting that, you know, if I know that I, I'm going to be out of town for, you know, 20 of the next 50 days, and then I'm not going to be able to treat this buyer as well as somebody on my team anyway. Um, so, you know, I can have that soft handoff and they can run with it. They can, you know, they can help them make a good living. And, um, you know, I get a little bit too, and, it, and everyone's happy. Yeah. Hey man, I, I love, I love the direction you're headed also with everything. What are you excited about right now, specifically in your business? I, I'm excited to grow. You know, it's, I'm to the point now to where I, I have these processes in place. We have these systems and can they be fine tuned? Absolutely. But at least they're there now. You know, I have a good baseline. Um, I'm entering the year with a, a full trained squad, you know, like everybody joined basically at the end of last year. And, you know, so it's just scrambling to get every, you know, everybody up to speed on stuff. And now everyone's up to speed there. You know, it, it's just a well-oiled machine now that can only grow bigger as I implement a lot of this stuff that I've learned from these masterminds and, you know, other things throughout the year. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, let's just kind of close it out this way. Let's think about that person that was somewhere between 25 and 75 deals, you know, where you were on the top end of that, uh, that may be sitting there considering building a team right now. Uh, what would you say to encourage them right now or discourage them? <laughs> what would you say to encourage them right now um, as they get ready to make this decision and really go all in? Yeah, you know, to me, you, you got to do it for the right reasons. Um, you, you have to put the systems and tools in place ahead of time. Um, and word of encouragement, don't be afraid to make that first hire. Um, I know when you're essentially a 1099 employee as a, as a real estate agent, you know, you're, uh, you're an outdoor cat and, uh, you need to, uh, know how to feed yourself. And so, uh, I, I know you'd like that reference. Um, <laughs> so just hiring somebody is a weird thing when you're a 1099, you know, cause now you're suddenly in charge of paying somebody their, their livelihood. Uh, but if you, if you do it for the right reasons and you have them 
do the stuff that needs to be done that is not income producing or that you just don't enjoy doing, you're not good at, it's going to grow your business to where what you pay them is more than absorbed in the additional money and commission that you earn. Yeah. Kyle Oberlin is an outside cat. Ain't nobody giving you nothing, Kyle. You're out there <laughs> hunting and eating what you kill. I love it. Um, listen, uh, I know you guys got some value out of this. Kyle, if you don't mind, tell them how they can get in touch with you if they've got a referral to come up your way. Um, and if they just want to reach out and say thanks for uh, all this information. Yeah, absolutely. Any any way I can help um, anyone that you have that's going to Northeast Ohio, uh, you get a hold of me on my cell. It's 330-714-714. 5807. Uh, or of course, just with any real estate agent, just Google me, you'll find all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You're a boss, Kyle. Um, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate all that you do for the industry and uh, the way you inspire me. Uh, I know you guys got something out of this. Reach out to Kyle, let him know how much you appreciate it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.